Right, today, you've probably not met Politics UK before. I know you are, yeah. You've been on that side, yeah, really, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, there you are. Well, all of our questions will have come from our um, Facebook community. Sure. Um, and they're all going to be from a various host of... Uh, how many have you got? Um, well, I've got, I'm going to ask you five if I can get away with it. Five. And then I've got more if we've got more enough time. But I think five is probably the five. limit. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, okay, this one is from an Alan Wiley. Um, if the UK left the EU today, um, how would tomorrow be different? What do you mean if? When? <laughs> when? Let's be positive about this. So when and how would it be different? We'd be a self-governing nation once again. Right. Doesn't mean yep. we wouldn't have a government that would make bad decisions. Yep. We'd make well our governments that make dreadful decisions, but we'd be able to get rid of them. Right. And we'd be able to have sensible conversations in general elections yep. about business, about employment regulations, right. about health and safety, about the environment, about all these things that have now literally slipped beyond our democratic fingertips. Seventy-five percent of our laws are now not made in this country. They're made somewhere else. So number one, we get our democracy back. Number two, we get a little bit of our self-respect and pride back, that we're back running our own show. And number three, we'll be able to engage with the rest of the world, which at the moment we're forbidden from doing. Absolutely. So that's uh, so the number one priority is to leave Europe, is it? Well, not or to leave Europe, Europe, no, to leave the European Union, to, Union. to have a relationship based on trade and cooperation with Europe, but actually to make our own laws. Brilliant. Man, appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> Right then, uh, this is a climate change question and it's been brought by Jack Barker. Um, are we as hu humans responsible for climate change? Um, is there a positive effect we can have on climate change? And what would you keep to to, um, to inspire the change? First things first, uh, the jury is out. Yep. You know, when we heard all this rubbish five years ago, the science is settled and all, I mean, all of these findings being produced by people who are being paid taxpayers' money to produce that conclusion. Right. In science, nothing is ever settled. You know, things are always up for debate. Uh, look, I don't know, is the answer to that. Yeah. You know, whether CO2 is the great demon that people think it is, I, I would have thought is pretty unlikely. Mm -hmm. But even if it was, uh, let's get a sense of perspectives on where we are with this. We in the UK are responsible for about 2% of the CO2 emissions in the world. Yeah. And what we're doing, we're doing it to meet EU targets, but we have a UK government that is keen we go even further. We're despoiling our landscapes and seascapes with not only hideous <laughs> wind turbines, yeah. uh, but things that are so unreliable, they have to have 100% backup, um, and they add significantly to the electricity bill of everybody. And on top of that, we have an emissions trading scheme which is driving steel making and manufacturing industry away from our shores. Uh, and frankly, all the while we're doing this, the Chinese are building two new coal-fired power stations every week. Right. Uh, we are damaging British industry. We are transferring money from poor people through their bills to rich people like landowners. Yeah. I mean, David Cameron's father-in-law gets nearly a thousand pounds a day for just citing wind turbines That's on his land. <laughs> so, so I honestly think that this is the, 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 the route we're going down is utter madness, and it's making no difference yeah. to global CO two emissions, even if they were. So, from UKIP's point of view, you would be focusing on the economic benefits as, until the jury's out on where. The well, I think we have to say to ourselves that to unilaterally yeah. uh, do such enormous damage to British manufacturing industry uh, when the rest of the world is developing doesn't make sense. But secondly, as I said, there's no proof. You know, I mean, since 1998, temperatures have not gone up. No, right. No, I, I, I appreciate that answer. Brilliant. Um, I'm firing through these, as you can yeah. tell. <laughs> right. Uh, this one's a question on immigration. Came quite a bit on the uh, these yeah. discussions, Reds, but people born outside the UK are feeling alienated and disadvantaged by UK policy when entering the UK. Um, we're all immigrants. What is the policy which you... Do you know, we're not all immigrants. I mean, that, that, that is a very, very weak <laughs> argument. That, 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 that is actually a very weak <laughs> argument. It always gets trotted out, but yeah. it's not actually true. Mm. Look, we've just had the census figures out today, yeah. uh, which show the biggest growth in our population ever, and over two-thirds of that growth directly right. through immigration into Britain since Labour came to power yeah. in 1997, and no evidence that the coalition government is changing any of it. After all, at least 600,000 people came and settled here last year. Right. So, so we have um, a population uh, that I suspect is very much higher 
yeah. than the census figures tell us. Um, talk about overcrowding. We haven't been on the Victoria <laughs> Line in London this morning. I suspect it's a massive underestimate. Uh, uh, this is not about. I mean, you know, the question. People coming in here feel disadvantaged by UK. Well, absolutely rubbish. The people who feel disadvantaged, I'll tell you who feels disadvantaged, and that's the white working class in this country, who feel that they're being undercut, uh, that employers aren't giving them an opportunity, um, and, and, it, and, it, and it's led to a massive division in our cities. You know, if I think back, right. when I was younger, there was a big immigration debate, uh, in, in fact, refugee debate, about what was happening in Uganda. You know, Armin was, oh, yes. Armin was going to kill all the Asians. And the British government said, you know, we will accept these people into our country uh, because they really are in, in fear for their lives. Massive debate. Mm -hmm. could, could we cope with the numbers? Less than 30,000. Right. When we opened the door to Eastern Europe, a million came in two years. So let's get a sense of perspective. Never in our history have we had such open door immigration policies as we've currently got. And yeah. what we've argued in UKIP is this. The National Health Service is here for us, it's not here for the entire world. It's about time we started putting the interests of British workers first. Yes, we welcome yep. migrant workers into Britain, provided they've got the necessary skills and they come here with a work permit, not an automatic entitlement yep. to Social Security. So separating auto, uh, auto entitlement to permits and to... Absolutely. Essentially. Absolutely. Uh, and you know, last year, Yep. The, re the refugee figure last year, and we're not, and we're not suggesting changing that, yep. but the refugee figure for last year was 14,000. Right. That's 14,000 out of 600,000. Right. All right. Brilliant. No, I appreciate the answer. Um, it will be discussed. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it will. I mean, what, what is that? Funny, isn't it? Because I mean, yeah. you, know, you say that, but actually, immigration is being discussed by the public at large. Yep. Many of them are extremely angry, yet there is a reluctance amongst the political class to really engage with these issues. I would say it's the biggest reluctance we've got. I think it is, and of course, the trouble is, we're members of the European Union, that, yeah. mean, that mean we have to have a total open door to, yeah. to very, very poor countries. Brilliant. No. Does it make sense to me? <laughs> no, it's, uh, and I, I'm, I guarantee that will be the one that gets to the discussion. <laughs> Again, I'm going to hit you with the fourth question, which is economy and debt. Um, and this is brought to you by Mick Constable. How would UKIP deal with the vast debt burden? Would you do investment or austerity? Well, I think you have to do both, actually. Right. That's the point. I don't think it's one without the other. I think we have to cut. Of that, there is absolutely no doubt at all. Yeah. And this, this fatuous debate that goes on yeah. on TV and radio debates about the cuts. Yeah. We borrowed 125 billion last year and more. <laughs> We're adding to the national debt. In fact, the projections are. That on, our, on our current rate, the national debt will increase by 40% over the next four years. Yep. So let's get real. Yeah. Um, you know, let's get real on this. We need very, very big cutbacks. Of course we do. Um, and of course, you know what I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say that we start off with not wasting money on the European Union. Yep. We, we radically cut back the foreign aid budget. Yes, folks, I know that's only 2%, but it's a start. Um, listen. We've got to take the knife to the quangocracy in this country. The right. vast amounts of money, the disease of bureaucracy that runs right through our public services and this whole new industry that has sprung up of, of the quango. Yep. They're where the massive cuts have to well, come. And how do we get growth? Yep. How do we get stimulus? Well, our view, very, very strongly, is you get that through deregulation. Yep. You know, if we, I mean, there are, there are 4.2 million Right. Small businesses and sole traders in this country. If we relax the employment laws, if just one in four, if, if just one in four of them took on a school leaver, mm -hmm. uh, that would make a heck of a dent in youth unemployment. So yes, we have to do that. Brilliant. And just just to go with that, yeah. um, because of both the two, one and two parties are actually um, are slightly opposing on their views on how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the conservative way, way of large austerity, or at least talking about large austerity? to Labour's well, large investment. Well, I mean, I mean, I'm sorry, this word from Labour of investment, I mean, mm. it is absolutely morally bankrupt mm. after what that moron Brown did mm. to our national finances. You know, yeah, I know we had to bow the banks out, but even yeah. despite that, you know, we were going on spending, spending, spending. We rewrote the language and called it investment. Most of it was waste, frankly. Um, so, uh, look, the Tories are borrowing the Tory Labour coalition are borrowing hugely. Labour would borrow even slightly more hugely. It doesn't really make any difference. 
They're both pursuing the same policy. Yeah. Uh, Osborne's problem is he's got no growth strategy. And the reason he's got no growth strategy is because our hands are completely tied right. because we've handed over control of the levers through which we could create growth to the European Union. Brilliant. No, I appreciate your answer to that. And uh, this one is probably um, going to play against the Lib Democrats. <laughs> but um, the fifth question really is, um, position, your current position in the polls is third. Um, which has actually just jumped above Liberal Democrats. So really, on the apparent misfortunes of Liberal Democrats, how are you going to hold that position, and how are you going to gain on that position, and what are you looking to do with Well, I think, I mean, look, you know, in the last two years, there have been some very big changes in UK politics, mm. and the Lib Dems are down. Yeah. You know, that picture of Clay with the pledge, I mean, you know, <laughs> uh, it didn't do a lot of good. I think, that, I think that we've grown in support for a variety of reasons. Mm. Um, I think the main one is that we've been clear and consistent on a variety of issues. And a lot of people out there are saying, well, actually, these guys have been right on some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's been very, very useful to us. Um, to grow from here, <clears throat> we've just got to get better at what we do. We've got to get more professional. We've got to keep recruiting high-quality people. You know, I'm here in Dublin yep. tonight, where we've got a new branch chairman and his wife. We've recently come across the party. Um, we've already got 200 people who booked tickets to come tonight's, to tonight's event. Goodness knows how many more might turn up if yeah. the rain holds off. <laughs> and, uh, but, but that gives you an idea yeah. of where UKIP's going. We are attracting younger, brighter, more enthusiastic people. The criticism of UKIP in the past was that it was a dad's army. Well, wonderful people, but I guess in a way, it was a fair criticism. Yeah. But, there's, but there's, there's a new energy and a new expertise coming in in the party. Our biggest difficulty is raising enough money to fight the big boys, you know, on some sort of level playing field. But, it, but, but even there, you know, we're trying and we're making progress. And I do honestly think that to do as well as we did in the Metropolitan Borough elections this year points forward to the counties in 2013, where yep. we can do better still. We've got a European election of 2014. We've got the main issues that UKIP stands for now absolutely at the heart, the mainstream of the British-UK political debate. I tell you what, yep. people are surprised with where we are. Yeah, well, I'll make you a prediction. We're going to surprise them some more. <laughs> All right. Funny. Can I slip one more question? Quickly. Quick, quick. Brilliant. OK. Um, right then. Uh, recent, recent comments about being a libertarian party. Are you intending to be a libertarian party? Because there's not an awful lot of libertarians who don't feel they've got a party at the moment. We, of course, are. <laughs> we of course are a party with libertarian principles, and we take the view. Mm. that the back room of the local pub, if it wants to provide smoking, should be able to. And we take the view that if you want to go hunt foxes on Saturday afternoons, but I don't, but if you want to go hunt foxes on Saturday afternoons, you should be able to do it. But right. the state is overburdening, the state is overweening, uh, they're desperate with their EU partners to not control what we do on the internet and everything else, and we want to fight those things, we want to defend liberty, we want to defend habeas corpus, and many of the great things yeah. that this country has stood for. Brilliant. Well, I, I appreciate your time. Thank you very and, much. And uh, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Nigel. Good, good. good. <coughs>